I hope everyone's enjoying summer. Soberoni of Jane Day Reviews here with the Servant Spotlight for the Best of Both Worlds and Bonnie and Mary Reed Archer. We'll be examining their stats and skills as well as going over pointers on how to utilize them effectively and an overall grade comparing them to how they stack up to the other 4 star servants. I also have a spotlight out for Mordred Rider up on the channel right now so do check that out right after this but for now on to Anne's stats. Anne has a max HP of 11,521, which is about average for a 4-star archer and slightly above average overall compared to all the other 4-star servants. Her max attack of 9,446 is also average among her fellow 4-star archers. With the archer damage modifier though, her attack becomes 8,973, slightly below average for a 4-star servant. Taking a look at her skills, her first skill is Beach Flower Rank A+, which increases the attack of all allies for 3 turns between 9.5% and 19.5% depending on level, and it increases the critical start drop rate of all male allies for 3 turns between 21 and 41%, again depending on level. Her second skill is Treasure Hunt C Rank C, which increases her critical start gather rate for 1 turn between 300 and 600 percent, and grants her between 5 and 15 crit stars, both depending on level. And finally, her last skill is Pirate Glory Rank C+, which increases her attack for 3 turns between 8.5 and 25.5%, depending on level. It also applies Guts for 1 time, and decreases her debuff resist by 50% for 3 turns as a demerit. As for her passives, she has Magic Resistance Rank D, which increases debuff resist by 12.5%, and Independent Action Rank A+, which increases her crit strength by 11%. Taking a look at her deck and Noble Phantasm, Anne has an Arts Buster deck with Quick Arts Arts Buster Buster and a Buster Noble Phantasm. Her Noble Phantasm is Caribbean Freebird Act 2, which deals significant damage to a single enemy with between a 600 and 1000% damage modifier. It also deals bonus damage when HP is lower and decreases defense of an enemy between 10 to 30% depending on overcharge. Taking a closer look at her cards, we see that her quick card hits 3 times, her arts hits twice, her buster hits once, and her extra attack hits 5 times. She has a noble phantasm gain rate of 0.85% and a star rate of 8.10%. This amounts to above average noble phantasm gain because of the 2 arts cards and high NP gain rate, but mediocre star generating because of only 1 quick card. And here we have Anne and Mary, but in swimsuits and in the archer class instead of rider. And a lot of this spotlight can be boiled down to that, they are quintessentially the same servant with the same playstyle of being crit focused with a gimmick for doing more damage at lower HP. But there are a couple of massive improvements, first and foremost they have a buster oriented deck making them work a lot better with many of the support buffers, but more importantly their skills have been massively revamped. Beach Flower is only a slightly weaker version of Tamamo Lancers and it acts as both their best form of team utility, not only providing a strong charisma for the party, but it also increases the star drop for all males, something that plays very much toward their strength. It synergizes perfectly with their second skill, Treasure Hunt, which provides bonus crit stars and increases star gather rate. This is pretty much the good version of Instinct as it generates a good amount of stars and it ensures that you get those stars by buffing the star weight. The buff only lasts one turn, but because Anne and Mary are archers, they already have a very high star absorb, so unless you're alongside other riders, you shouldn't have any problem consistently getting crit stars. Finally, Anne and Mary's signature skill is Pirate's Glory. A 25.5% attack buff for 3 turns is pretty strong, but far more important than that is the Guts effect. The Guts on this skill will revive you with 1 HP, complementing your Noble Phantasm perfectly. It also does not go away. Unlike every other version of Guts, once activated this will stay active until you die, giving you basically a guaranteed second life. It does come with the demerit of a massive decrease to debuff resist, so do expect to get hit with a lot of stuns and debuffs, but it is worth it and you pretty much always want to start off every battle by activating this skill first. As such, you should also prioritize it first in leveling since it's your strongest buff, followed by a beach flower for that utility and star generating, and then finally treasure hunt since it works well even at the lower ranks. Anne's Noble Phantasm is Caribbean Freebird Act 2, and it's almost identical to the Rider version. 
only this time it's a Buster Nova Phantasm. It also gains more power based on how low your HP is. You will still only want to use this when your health is as low as possible, aka right after you're revived with your guts at 1 HP. There are some additional differences as well. For one thing, Ryder and Mary's had a bonus damage modifier that scaled with overcharge, but their archer version doesn't. Instead, the overcharge lowers defense. That means that if the Noble Phantasm levels are equal, the Rider version of their Noble Phantasm can hit for more damage if it has overcharge. However, that is almost never the case because if there is one advantage that Archer, Anne, and Mary have over their Rider counterparts, it's consistency. It's very easy to maximize Noble Phantasm damage thanks to your guts reviving you with 1 HP. Whereas Anne and Mary Rider are high risk, high reward, Archer Anne and Mary are low risk, high reward because they can very reliably do astronomically high damage without the risk of death thanks to their guts. This isn't to say that all their flaws are fixed though. In exchange for consistency, Archer Anne and Mary lack any crit damage buffs aside from independent action despite them being crit focused archers. They also share the same flaw as their rider counterparts in that they're one and done. After you noble phantasm, you're pretty much guaranteed to die the very next turn. And finally, while perma guts is fantastic, Archer, Anne, and Mary are very susceptible to buff removal. If they're hit with a noble phantasm or a skill that removes buffs like Amakusa's, then they are dead in the water because their guts will be removed and they depend on their guts to do all their damage. Unlike with most servants, defense is not a priority with Anne and Mary, you want your HP to be low. So instead you're going to want to focus on damage support, and as Buster servants, the options are a lot better. Waver, Nightingale, Hans, Nero Bride, Liz, Caesar, Iskander, Helena, and Shuten are all good options for bolstering your damage. You'll also want to make sure you have a star generator on your team that is male so you can take advantage of the crit oriented skill set. So use Gilgamesh, Tristan, Emiya, and Emiya Assassin, Cursed Arm Hassan, Dante's, and Kotaro. And in Mary's Bondcraft Essence is taking a shower. It boosts the Buster and Arts card effectiveness of all allies by 10%. It's very good considering their deck, but you're either going to want a craft essence that boosts your Noble Phantasm damage as much as possible, or one that boosts your crit damage to make up for the lack of a hard crit damage skill. If you want to maximize your NP damage, which I do suggest doing, then the best craft essence is Black Grail. It not only gives you the biggest damage boost to your Noble Phantasm, but it also hurts you, bringing you closer to 1 HP. Other good alternatives are Golden Sumo, Halloween Princess, Limited Zero, and Heaven's Feel, but Black Grail remains the best choice. For crit damage, go with Gem Magecraft, Victor of the Moon, Gudao, or Lunar Hot Springs. And this is also one of the rare occasions where Knight's Dignity also works very well. Since you're going to get so much extra crit damage off of it, it basically functions like an additional bonus crit damage skill with the added effect of having you take extra damage. Overall, Anne and Mary Archer are a more polished and consistent version of their Rider counterparts. They have the only permanent gut skill in the game, they have a guaranteed means of maximizing their Noble Phantasm damage, they are decent Buster Crit Servants, and they can pull off some of the highest single turn damage of any servant. They do still suffer from being overly gimmicky, relying on that one shot one kill style of Noble Phantasm, which does hurt them a lot later on in the game when break bars come around. They also lack any hard crit damage boosting skills, and they are hard countered by buff removal, a fairly common thing for enemies to have in the late game. But overall, I do think that they're very strong and very reliable, so they get a B plus from me. Their high damage really puts them over the top. They are especially excellent at killing lower tier bosses or finishing off more challenging bosses if you have them in the back row, sort of as an insurance policy. And those are my thoughts on Anne and Mary Archer. I do think that they're more practical and reliable than their Rider counterparts, and I'll probably be reevaluating their Rider counterparts as well sometime down the line. But let me know what you guys think in the comments below, and please do check out that Mordred Rider Spotlight linked both on screen right now. 
and in the description. Don't forget to leave a like if you enjoyed this video, and consider subscribing if you really enjoyed the video. Join the party over on our Discord, show us on Twitch, and follow us on Twitter. And I will see you all in the next Servant Spotlight. So we're only out. Later.